It's fascinating to look more closely at the fashions of the Georgian period because this is really where we start to see the kernels of much of our modern fashion industry today. The process of dressing for Georgian people was more complicated. So you'd have undergarments, you'd have structural garments, particularly for women that would create the final silhouette. And what's interesting is that you can often see those component layers in the final effect. The first garment a man would put on would be his shirt. This was usually made of linen, whereas a woman would put on her shift. These went on over the head, and for a man, it would have been tied or buttoned at the neck. Men's stockings would have been visible. They would have covered the lower leg, and then you would have breeches above, whereas women's stockings were usually completely concealed by skirts reaching to the ground. In this print, we can see the rake, and one of his stockings is crumpling down his leg, suggesting he's removed his garter and giving an indication that he's someone of rather loose morals. A pair of stays was a sort of early example of a corset. They shaped the body and they provided support. A bit like a modern bra, they fasten at the back with a single lace. As you can see here, this required assistance in the process of dressing. Although there's a bit of a misconception that stays would have been very uncomfortable to wear, I think they would have felt very supportive actually and comfortable and not particularly constrictive. Women wore a type of understructure beneath their skirts which created a characteristic silhouette. These might have been created using a pair of jointed hoops and would have sat on the hips and then let the fabric fall down. By the 1780s, instead of having a very wide silhouette, it was more fashionable to have a large posterior. And this was usually created using a padded bum roll. They're padded with cork or horsehair, so it would have been quite a soft seat. Fashion was just as important to men in the 18th century as it was to women, and many of them spent just as much as women did on their clothing. Portraits like this one of George IV when he was Prince of Wales show that he was really at the forefront of fashion and followed new trends very closely. Breeches were the key garment for men that covered the legs, and they usually reached just below the knee. In portraits like this one of George IV when Prince of Wales, we can see a perfectly polished vision of men's legwear. We might think of this as the Instagram version, whereas the reality is perhaps more visible in satirical prints, where we see a man being manhandled into a pair of optimistically small breeches. For the most formal occasions, a man might wear a highly decorative form of coat covered in embroidery with perhaps spangles added. These are a type of sequin. For much of the time, most fashionable men had actually started to adopt a much more comfortable coat, which was called a frock coat. It's very plain, it doesn't have any embroidery on it, it has this small turn down collar, and it didn't have stiffening around the body, so it was much more comfortable to wear. The main garment for women over their undergarments was a gown. There were all sorts of different types of gown. In this portrait of Queen Charlotte, this is a very expensive dress, but the style of dress would have been worn by women from different sections of society. This is a woman who's been identified as Queen Charlotte's laundry maid. And the clothes that she's wearing, they're generally the same type of clothes, but they're made of much simpler materials. By the end of the 18th century, we start to see quite a clear shift in the silhouette of women's dress. It's much more columnar, and it's probably the one that's most familiar to us when we think of the novels and television adaptations of Jane Austen. A key component of the Georgian look was the hair and makeup. For both men and women, this really finished off the final effect. It's a common misconception that men and women wore wigs during the Georgian period. While it's true that men did wear wigs, actually women usually wore their own hair dressed. It could be dressed very ornately over pads, but it was usually their real hair. In this portrait, which shows Queen Charlotte with her eldest daughter, we can see that the Queen has adopted the very fashionable heart-shaped hairstyle, which would have involved pomade and powder and probably people to help create it. That is shown in another drawing where we can see an elderly woman and you can see a puff of powder being put onto her hair. Over the course of the 18th century, hairstyles and makeup becomes much more natural, much more influenced by the classical ideal. In these two portraits by Thomas Gainsborough, we can see an example of what the finished look would look like for both men and women. Fashion reflects the changes of the period and we see innovations reflected in the types of textiles worn, the colours and the styles of dress.